Have you been wondering what the big deal with mint is? Well, let me clear it all up for you. Hi everyone, my name is Lisbeth and I make videos that help you plan for a better financial future while living your best life today. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new weekly videos. So Mint. Mint is both a website and an app that are synced together, of course. It was actually bought out by Intuit, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is also the owners of TurboTax. So if you use TurboTax and you like how that system works, then you will love Mint. I've actually used Mint for, gosh, many, many years. I wanna say close to 10 years if it's been out that long, but it's been out for a long time. And I really used to use it a lot back in college because I always had my phone or my laptop with me. So it was really easy to keep track of everything with one or the other. Well, now that I'm not working on my undergrad and I don't have a full course load, I have a little bit more time to maintain my planner and actually be able to write everything down, which is my preferred method of budgeting. But because I am very familiar with Mint and anytime that anyone wants to maintain their budget with technology, I always highly recommend Mint. So for that reason, I wanted to make a video that went over everything that Mint actually did with sort of real numbers because I will show you my Mint account. However, keep in mind that it's not exact because I haven't used it in a long time. There are a few accounts that I haven't added to Mint and there are a few accounts that are on there for some weird reason that I haven't actually gotten them taken off. So with that said, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how Mint works and if it's the best tool for you to use to manage your budget, then let's get started. Okay, so first we're starting off on Google. All you have to do is literally put mint.com and it will take you to Mint. This is how the home screen looks like. Of course, you sign up for free. So the front page kind of gives goes over everything that you can do with Mint, which is budgets, bills, and your credit check, which is something that I've mentioned before when it came to Mint. I will link a video where I talk about how to best keep track of your credit and what apps I like to do that with. So when I log into my account, just keep in mind that one, it's gonna take a long time to load, which I'll skip over anyways, but two, everything's kind of all over the place because I haven't actually kept up with my Mint account for a while. I am blocking out my information for obvious reasons. So first you're gonna let it refresh. So the very first thing that you see is an offer, of course. Um, no thanks, so we're gonna do that. So on your left, on the very top, you will see all of your cash. So this is where you will put all your different accounts that you have and it will keep track of pretty much all of your checkings, all of your savings. You just have to do the separate logins for each individual accounts. So on here, you only see my Capital One accounts, which I have two checkings and one savings. And you see my Federal Credit Union, which is a credit union I had back in college that I no longer use, obviously, but it still apparently has five bucks because that's what keeps it open. But I have a couple other accounts that I haven't added on here, uh, credit cards, this really high one is currently a 0% interest rate card um, with that I am working on paying off because I did a large purchase. So the only reason I have it on there as part of my credit is because it's at 0% interest. So if it were at a regular credit card interest, then you better believe that I would not have that on there as well as my Best Buy credit card, which is also at a 0% interest. And that will actually get paid by November, which is also when the interest goes back up to regular. All of the other credit cards though that you see do get paid off on time and in full in order for me to not get charged any interest. So although it seems like a really high amount of credit card debt right there, compared to what is available on my credit, it's still under that 30% mark. And I am not actually getting charged any interest on my credit cards. So I'm not too worried about that amount. So that's what you will see if you have ca any cash you have, you'll see it in green. Any debt you have, you'll see it underneath. You also see my loans that I have. I have my car note and I have a couple of, I don't, that's actually not updated. That needs to go away because that is very old. So technically on here, it's only my car loan and I do have my student loans, but it is too big of a number for me to transfer over to my Mint account. It would just scare me every time I logged in, so I'd rather not. 
So the reason there's a red dot on the side here is because it needs to get updated. So as you can see, it hasn't been updated in over a month. Um, you simply have to go to settings and then where it says right here, is this the right login? You just put try again. Oh gosh, I don't think I know my current login. So it looks like I currently don't know my Fidelity password. I have it written down somewhere. I have a password book, don't judge me. And so it needs to get updated. Same thing with Target, I need to update it. Same thing with Verizon, although Verizon always for some reason will never be updated. I have to literally log in every single time and it's really annoying so I usually just leave it alone. I know how much my bill is, I don't have to worry about it. So you can also add property if you have any property, um, you can add that on there. If you were to keep up with everything, this would probably not look like this and mine would probably not look like this either if I actually had all of my accounts on here. But we're just gonna go with it. But what I wanna focus on is your transactions. For the sake of budgeting, this is where you would mostly spend your time when it comes to Mint. This would combine all of your cash and credit accounts. I tend to use one card mainly when it comes to all my purchases. I also use my Target card because that gives me 5% and I don't get quite that much back in rewards when it comes to my regular credit card. So I do use my Target card at Target, but that's the only place I use it. The other card I do use sometimes though, it's my Southwest card if I'm buying airline tickets through Southwest because they give me double the points back uh, instead of the normal 1.25 that I get from my regular credit card. So the current card that I normally use is my Venture One card. So it gives you what I currently owe, of course, which will get paid off every month, don't worry. But what I wanna focus on is the transactions, the individual transactions that you see right here. The very first one is HEB, which um, in Texas is a grocery store. So it is under the category groceries. So that's good, I don't have to move that. Starbucks, coffee shops, I'll leave that there. For me, Michael's is usually hobbies because I buy craft stuff, so I'll leave that there. Text tag here is tolls, so that's good. If you go to Whole Foods, for example, you see right here, Whole Foods says party planning. Like, what? So I actually went to Whole Foods to buy some cakes to take for New Year's Eve. So I'm actually gonna put it under gift because it's not technically groceries for me. It's It was more of like me bringing something for Christmas, not Christmas, sorry, for New Year's Eve to my family's house. So we're gonna go under gifts and donations and I just do gifts and there you go it changes it to gifts so then it'll add it to your category of gifts if that's one of your categories so hobby lobby same thing hobbies um the dogwoods actually a bar i went out last weekend and it does put it on the right one chick-fil-a i put it under fast food same thing h-e-b tolls Seneca is a gas station, so it's under gas and fuel. So then you would pretty much every week or so go there and just make sure that everything that you used your card for is under the right category. And as long as that's good, then you would go to your budgets category. So these are all out of whack. Don't mind my random budget that was done a long time ago. So let's get rid of this. So you would put in your income and how much your expected income is and as you have income coming in which you can also label as income if you have extra jobs and something like that if it's not your normal paycheck you can always name something income the category is always modifiable so then you would go and make sure that your mortgage and rent so that's actually accurate my rent is 843 daycare so i don't actually pay that much in daycare because my daughter's dad pays half of it but since he gives me the money essentially to pay it i put it all there so i know that all of that's going towards daycare so yeah so you would pretty much just go here and create a budget if you need to make one so for example if you wanted to make yourself a makeup budget then makeup or beauty you can do it for every month, every few months, if you wanted to do the rotating categories, as I've mentioned in my previous video, which I will link for you down below and in the info cards above as well. You can change it to just this one month is the only month that you're gonna have that budget category. And if you wanted to roll over the amount that you didn't spend the previous month or roll it over to the next month, you can just start each new month with the previous month's leftover amount. So I think that's pretty cool if it's kind of one of those things that you wanna save up something for something bigger, then you can just roll over what you didn't spend over to the next month so you can kind of save up for something. And then you would put in the amount you want. So say $50, right? You would save it and it will add it to your uh, list of budgets. 
and as you use your card and you spend on makeup this will you know fill up the bar essentially once it's yellow that means you're close to the your budget limit and once it's red it's either you've reached it or you've gone over it so that's pretty much how the budgets work you just set up each category and the budgeted amount for that category and you pretty much just make sure that your transactions are all kept up to date and it will fill in that budget as you go which i think is really cool if you wanted to keep track of it through the website keep in mind that this is also an app um, and you can do pretty much everything that you can do on the website you can do it on your app what other thing i like from Mint is this goal section. So if you've seen my previous video, then you know that one of the steps to creating a budget is to set up goals. You can go to add a goal. So you can go to your goals, whether it is that you wanna pay off credit card debt, pay off loans, save for an emergency, save for retirement, buy a home, buy a car, save for college, take a trip, improve my home, or create your own custom goal. So let's say, let's say that you wanna save up for, emer for an emergency. So if you're shooting for that $1,000 emergency fund, then you would put that there. How many months without income do you want to be prepared for? Oh, this is saying like an emergency fund, like your three to six month emergency fund. So just for the sake of it being an emergency fund, which is $1,000, we're just gonna put one month for $1,000 and you're gonna continue. So then it's gonna ask you uh, if you need to open a new account for this, if you're gonna use an existing account or I'll choose an account later. I'm just gonna put, I'll choose an existing account. My emergency fund is actually not even on here. So I'm gonna add it to this additional savings that I have. And that's the one I'm gonna choose. But of course, if you already have one that's gonna be specifically for your emergency fund, then make sure you choose that one. So you title it that, your goal amount, how much you currently have saved. So let's assume that's zero and then you'll need $1,000. So if you set up your goal of when you want to have it by, then you'll just put whatever date you want to have it by and it'll tell you how much you need to contribute every month for that to be your goal date. So you're ahead of schedule. Well, saying by saving $56 per month, we project that you will reach your goal one year, six months before your planned date of July, 2020. So obviously that's way off because it's assuming that I already have that, which I do, but if you're completely new, you're pretty much just gonna move this around until your monthly contribution is something that is manageable to include in your budget. And of course, if you save in other categories, you can always transfer the remaining amount to that account so that way you reach your goal a lot faster. So we're just gonna cancel because obviously I'm not gonna save that goal. But yeah, that's what I like about the goal section too. It's definitely a way for you to keep track of your goals without having to write anything down. Another thing I like about Mint is this um, section up here where it tells you upcoming bills. So as long as you have that account set up through Mint, then it will tell you when the due date for that account is. What it doesn't do though, is it doesn't keep track if it's an automatic bill. So you actually have to come back on here when it's paid and mark as paid. This one hasn't been paid, but it normally is taken out on the 20th, I believe, which says on here. That's when it's automatically taken out of my account. And then I would come back and mark as paid because it was automatically taken out of my account. But all the other bills that you don't pay automatically, it's a good thing that it'll tell you exactly when it's due. And for credit cards, it will tell you the actual statement balance that needs to be paid for you to not get charged any interest. So that is pretty much what Mint does and what it keeps track of. So there you have it. That's the Mint app slash website that I showed you. I hope you found it helpful to kind of go over the layout of how it looks with actual numbers versus just looking at what they have to show you. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me and my channel out. So if you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments below. I read all of those comments and questions and I try to make videos that pertain to what people ask me. And I will leave my video on how to create and maintain a budget in the info cards above for you um, since that goes really well with this video. If you would like more tips or inspiration, then make sure you are following me on my Instagram page and or my Facebook group. I'm on there all the time for any additional questions that you may have. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to y'all next time. Bye.